that actually brings up to my next question. And we have some more questions in the comments, but before we get to that, you brought it up. So not every solar pro are made the same, right? Like you give leads and you give them out. Some are closing leads that you didn't expect them to close and other people are can't close leads. That's what you think is a quality lead. Like, so what do you do? How do you train people to like, not every lead is going to be perfect, you know, expect it to be bad, but work it anyway. Do you have any like tips or tricks you do to make sure they keep working leads, even though they think it may not be the best quality? Yeah, so I mean, online leads suck. Like, there's no, uh, I'm an online leads guy, and I tell people all the time, like, online leads are, they're not fun. Like, even with high quality leads that you're paying 100 bucks per four, like, you get on the phone with them and they're still grumpy. They still try to hang up after the first five seconds. And if you're not experienced and you're not ready for that, um, then it's easy to kind of get discouraged and to have poor results. Uh, so that's the one thing is that I tell people is, Online leads suck, but we have to expect that every lead we talk to is is going to be going to be a success. Because once what happens is once we start like kind of thinking like this lead is going to be a failure, it impacts our conversation. And that whole conversation just doesn't go the way that we want. Uh, and the other thing I think is uh, kind of simplifying the appointment setting process. And what I mean by that is I, I'm not a big fan of scripts. I don't think scripts really work for the majority of people. What I kind of have guided people with is providing them with kind of a set of rules that helps. Meaning, for example, are you using a lot of either or questions, giving them options, allowing them to choose their destiny, but at the same time, um, you know what the outcome is going to be no matter which one they choose. So like my favorite example is uh, when we do a cold text message and we're like, hey, have you gone solar yet? Um, most of the time, if they haven't gone solar, chance is going to be no, or they're not going to reply, which is fine. Uh, we just got to keep following up with them. But uh, the, their answer is either no or yes. And then we kind of get into this habit where we're able to kind of steer the conversation down the path, but at the same time, we're not letting them take control of the conversation. So another example is making sure that we're ending our sentences with questions, because if we're ending our questions, we're the ones that's in, in control of the wheel. Um, another example is when we call them like, hey, how are you? As soon as we do that, we're, we're not asking them a question that we care about. We're also not asking them a question that's getting us closer to the outcome that we want. And it gives them the opportunity to say, I'm terrible, leave me alone, bye. And it's just really uh, important that uh, I'm trying to remember all, all the, I made a video on this like over a year ago and there, there's a lot of different ones that are, that they kind of all follow the same line. I think the biggest thing is just don't go into it like a robot. If you go into it like a robot, um, if you just kind of like look like you're trying to like, okay, what's the credit score? Boom. If, what are you, are your homework? How long have you been home? How old's your roof? Like if you go through the questions in that manner, what's going to happen is even if you get the answers you want, your the chance of no show is going to be much, much higher because they're not invested. They don't know anything about you. You don't really know anything about them. You know, the details about their house, but at the same time that didn't build any connection that's going to make them more likely to show up to the appointment or, more likely to actually close. So I think the biggest thing is uh, just helping them to find their own style and giving them rules so that they're able to have that conversation without sounding like a robot. You almost got to be like a call center manager too, but being the marketing director, right? Like you have to have like a big input in how what they say and how they transition from a lead to actually an appointment, right? Yeah, so when I was... Um, my agency for a small while, for six to nine months, we had our own in-house call center team. So we had five to eight um, appointment setting reps. And uh, that's one of the things I, I tell people is running call centers a hundred times harder than you would ever think you would expect when you go into it. Um, and, but a lot of it too is setting an appointment is a skill. Like it, it isn't something that you can just give any random person a list of questions and then they get on the phone and they try to get as many answers as possible and get through as many people as possible because that's where you get um, your show rates down below 30, 20% sometimes. And so it, you really have to train them and understand how, like what the information we need is, but how you can get that in kind of a, a conversational way where you're able to bond and build this trust and have a relationship with them. And then if you're the one attending the appointment, uh, that's awesome because then they're going to be more connected to you. Or um, once you've kind of built that trust and conversation, then you're able to kind of transfer uh, your knowledge and based like your reputation, you're able to connect with them, but then hand it off to someone. And then hopefully 
the appointment center should be their hype man. So like that was another thing that I always told people is to simplify it is your appointment center should be the sales reps like hype man. Like they yeah, should like, they should be edifying, right? Yeah, like, hey, yeah, like Joe, Joe said it. Uh, well, I'm glad that Joe, we're, we're going to get you set up with Joe. He's going to be able to show up to your house because he lives in the area. And he's going to really be able to show you um, like uh, your specific savings for your house. And because he's in your area, he knows all the ins and outs of the utility company. He's really going to be able to get you the best savings. And he's definitely the person that you want to talk to. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on his calendar. And like, so what you're able to do is when you do that and you have the connection, you know who you're booking it for. That's important. Uh, rather than, okay, one of our people will be reaching out to you shortly to confirm the appointment. Like that doesn't, uh, the person has, if Gary comes along and calls, Hey, you talked to our, our team earlier. Like they have no connection to Gary. Whereas the other scenario is if the person really hypes up this Joe person, um, they're going to be like, Oh, I'm kind of a little excited to talk to Joe. Joe sounds like the guy that we want to use. Like Joe, Joe sounds like the man and they're going to be more likely to, uh, show up to the appointment, but they're also going to be more likely to be invested in the appointment. And that's what's most important for them to, uh, hopefully have a quality sit and then hopefully the numbers look great and everything goes well. Hopefully uh, that leads to closes more often than not. Kyle Thumb dropping nuggets, everybody. Hope you guys got that. Get your nuggets ready. Hype man. <laughs> it's it's got to edify him. Yeah, because that's one of the things too is I, I tell people a lot and even when I ran my own call center, I always told people is if you have time and you can make the calls, you probably should. Like, cause the reason I say is unless you have enough where you're like overwhelmed, then you really don't necessarily want to have a call center because you should be like, like you should be excited. You should want to be able to have that touch because what that's going to do is you're building value. You're connecting with them. You're just improving your numbers. You're improving the chances that they show. You're improving the chances that uh, they're going to close. Or you're improving the chances that they're going to remember your name when you show up at their door. Um, all these little things, uh, it just kind of improves your overall effectiveness. So unless you're in a position where you just like, don't have a time, you absolutely can't call your leads. Um, I, I do recommend that people call their leads um, if they're able to.